Welcome to Jules Math Tools, where math is made easy. In today's session, I will be demonstrating two ways in which we can convert a percentage into degrees. In our session today, we're going to be converting percentages that are larger than 100%. And for this process, I'm going to be demonstrating two, two methods in which you can use. The first one that we're going to demonstrate in this method is when we have an improper fraction. So we're going to first begin by changing our percentage 120% into its fractional form where we have 100 as its denominator. Remember that regardless of how large our percentage is, it is always out of 100. And we're going to be multiplying that percentage to a complete revolution which measures 360 degrees. I remember that if you feel comfortable, you can still include your 1 in your denominator by changing 360 into a fraction, but if you're at that point where you can work without it, then we're going to move right along. I'm going to begin by now reducing my fractions, and I will divide 120 by 20, and divide 100 also by 20. 120 divided by 20 leaves us with 6, and 100 divided by 20 will give us 5. We now have 6 fifth being multiplied to 360 degrees. And as you know, because 360 can also be divided by 5, I'm now going to reduce my fraction a little further. So I'll divide 5 by 5, which will equal to 1, and 360 divided by 5 will equal to 72. So we now have 6 being multiplied to 72 degrees, and 72 degrees multiply by 6, 6 times 2 is 12, 6 times 7 is 42 plus 1 will give us 43. So our percentage 120% as degrees will equal to 432 degrees. And in looking at my percentage which is 120%, knowing that 120 is larger than 100%, that means naturally the degrees that we get when we convert this percentage into degrees should also be larger than 360 degrees. Okay, let's look at the second method which we can use to change our percentage 120% into a degrees. Now we've already changed this into degrees so we know that our answer is going to equal to 432 degrees. But we're just going to look at a different method in which we can achieve that answer. And we're going to do that in this part of the video by changing our percentage into an mixed fraction. So I'm going to begin by first again rewriting this as an improper fraction with my 1 in the denominator. And now I'm going to be changing my improper fraction into its mixed fraction form. So we know that 100 can go into 120 ones, which will leave us with 20 one hundredths. So this will be the mixed fraction form of my percentage. And in lowest term, this will equal to 1, dividing both parts of my fraction by 20. And this will be 1 fifth. Okay, so now we're going to look at 1 and 1 fifth. Remembering that this means the same thing as 1 being added to 1 fifth. And we know that 1, which is going to represent a complete whole, is going to equal to 360 degrees remembering that a complete revolution is 360 so that one will be my 360 and this will be added to one fifth of 360 so we have our one fifth being multiplied to 360 and we will be dividing 360 by 5 and in our previous part of the video we saw that when we divide both 5 and 360 by 5 this was equal to 72 degrees. So we will be adding 360 to 72 degrees. And 360, when added to 72 degrees, will again, we see that we get again our 432 degrees. So we see that when we change our percentage 120%, into its mixed fraction form and then take each of the separate parts and convert our one whole to 360 which represents a complete revolution and then change our one fifth into degrees for 72 degrees and then sum those numbers together we found that again we got 432 degrees 
okay so there you have it we just went through two methods of changing a percentage larger than 100 percent into degrees and we saw that in the first part of our session we changed this percentage into degrees by multiplying our improper fraction by 360 and then in our second method we converted our improper fraction into its mixed fraction form changing both parts into degrees and then adding their sum together to again achieve the same answer of 432 degrees but the best way for you to remember these steps is to practice remember that we do provide links in the description box below which will take you to worksheets where you can practice questions just like the ones you did today so until next time this is jules math tools where math is made easy